I haven't worn glasses on camera in a long time. You like it? Nah, but in all seriousness, that's not the main reason why I'm making the video in the first place. Letter grades. That's what we're gonna be talking about. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Drew, better known as RockShock01, and in this video, I'm going to be giving a letter grade to every single KU basketball player who played this season. Since finals week is around the corner for most schools around the country, I thought, why not give letter grades to every KU basketball player who played this season? Perfect timing. So unfortunately, there will be guys left off the video because they redshirted this season and didn't play any games this season. Those individuals will be Charlie McCarthy, Dylan Wilhite, Kyle Cuff, and Cam Martin. Now, Cam and Kyle actually did play a game. However, it was the exhibition game. They didn't play any regular season games, so they're off the list. However, 14 individuals will get graded by me. Some of them were good. Some of them were all, all right. Some of them just flat out sucked. However, I will say, no one got an F. And that's a good thing, because if I gave an F, there is some issues with that player. But yeah, uh, without further ado, let's give letter grades. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're going to go class by class. So let's start with the freshman. Bobby Pettiford, C-. Injury and illness plagued Pettiford's freshman season. And with inconsistencies on the court, Pettiford's freshman season was a bit underwhelming. Hopefully within the next couple of years, Pettiford will turn into that true point guard that we really wanted. But unfortunately, I didn't see any of that this season, so that's why I gave him a C-. Zach Clements, C. Now there were times that Zach had incredible performances this season, just like the Michigan State game and the Oklahoma game in Allen Fieldhouse. But lack of playing time and the ability to score and shoot at the free throw line really put Zach's grade down. If he just got more playing time, I think Zach's grade would be a little bit higher, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So ultimately I had to give Zach Clements a C. KJ Adams, C+. Having a start under his belt really lifted KJ above his freshman counterparts. And with his freakish athleticism and an ability to grab rebounds, KJ played dominantly in a few games, like in the Texas Tech game. However, his shooting numbers from the field and the free throw line really brought down his grade. Hopefully within the next couple years, KJ can bring those numbers up. But ultimately for this season, I had to give him a C+. That's it for the freshmen. Let's get into the sophomores. Joseph Yesifu, C. A very underwhelming performance to say the least. Joseph Yesifu was the third point guard on the depth chart if you really put it into perspective. But Joe had incredible games and very lackluster games to say the least. By next season, he'll probably be one of the two prominent point guards that KU will have. So ultimately this season, unfortunately, it's got to be a C. Dewan Harris, B+. Who in their right mind saw this coming? Dewan Harris played incredible this season. His shooting numbers from the field and three-point line improved from a season ago and was one of the best assist to turnover ratio point guards in the Big 12. Starting all but one game this season, Dewan Harris no doubt in my mind was KU's most improved player this season. So that's why ultimately I gave him a B plus. Jalen Wilson, B. Yeah, from a year ago, this was a little bit of a regressing season for Jalen Wilson. However, he still produced the numbers. Jalen averaged about 10 points and 7 rebounds a contest, but the months of November and December really hurt Jalen Wilson's grade in this situation. If it wasn't for January, February, March, and April, Jalen Wilson's grade would have been a lot lower, but ultimately, Jalen Wilson gets a B. That's it for the sophomores, let's get into the juniors. Michael Jankovic, D+. Sorry that I have to give the walk on the lowest grade on the team, but he really didn't play, he didn't shoot very well, and barely scored. If these numbers were a lot better, then I would have gave him a better grade, but ultimately, sorry Michael, you're getting a D+. Christian Brown, A-. If I consider Dewan Harris to be the most improved player on this team, there's no doubt in my mind that Christian Brown is a close second. CB was second in scoring, third in rebounds, and had one of the best shooting field goal percentages on the team. 
However, his shooting from the three and the free throw line really brought down his grade this season. So unfortunately, he's not going to get a perfect score, but ultimately Christian Brown gets an A-. That's it for the juniors. Let's get to the seniors. Jalen Coleman lands C. I kind of figured this would happen to him, but ultimately Jalen Coleman lands was a huge threat from beyond the three-point line especially in the game against George Mason where he scored a season high of 20. But other than that, JCL really didn't have that much productivity on this Kansas team. Little numbers in rebounding, little numbers in scoring, and shooting from everywhere else. So ultimately, I had to give Jalen Coleman lands a C. Chris Tehan, C. Now hold your horses. I know everybody would probably give him 100% on this, but... Chris only shot 30% from the field and 33% from three. Didn't play a lot, but still got to see some quality time on the court. And he made some of the biggest shots this season, so I'll give him that. But ultimately, I have to give Chris a C in this. Mitch Lightfoot, B-. His numbers this season were all season highs, especially in minutes, points, and rebounds. The one thing that I have against it is his shooting from the free throw line was about 50% for the season. Everything else was a much better improvement. So ultimately I have to give Mitch Lightfoot a B minus. Remy Martin, B. If it was just March and April alone, I'd give Remy an A plus. But ultimately he was predicted to be the Big 12 player of the year this preseason and really didn't live up to the hype. Also, injuries really plagued his season as well. Remy was the sixth leading scorer on this team, and if it wasn't for his March and April, his grade would be a lot lower. But thankfully, Remy Martin gets a B. David McCormick, A-. There is no doubt in March and April that David McCormick was the best player on this team. However, during the earlier months, he really didn't live up to the hype. David's rebounding numbers went up, his scoring went down, his field goal percentage went down, his blocks went up. Third in scoring, second in rebounds, and second in block shots this season. Good stats for David this season, but ultimately if it wasn't for his March and April, David McCormick would get a lower grade, so that's why he gets an A-. Ochai Abaji, A+. Call me a little bit biased here, but there is no doubt in my mind that Ochai's number this season were a big improvement. Ochai led the team in scoring with just under 19 points a game and led the team in three-point field goal percentage with just under 41%. His rebounding numbers also improved this season. There is no doubt in my mind that he deserves this grade, especially because he was the consensus Big 12 Player of the Year and the most outstanding player of the Final Four. So that's why Ochai Abaji gets an A+. And that's going to do it for me giving a letter grade to every single KU basketball player who played this season. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Did my grading system work or did it flat out stink? Also, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe and push that notification bell. Tell your friends about these videos and I'll see you again when the next video comes out. But until then, have a good day. Never ever bring exotic dancers to the field house. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.